and we are getting started and it looks like we are about live hello all newcomers and welcome back my fellow attorneyans as always it is me emperor at you know it you love it we are here today to talk about something quite interesting uh today i really want to bring up the topic of cal exit the california independence movement uh, and its ultimate demise uh not necessarily the entire you know anybody wanting california independence but specifically this cal exit campaign specifically uh this yes california movement uh, i want to talk about that because uh, the leader of it uh lewis marinelli just announced basically that it's over uh that his involvement with it is over uh, that that organization in general is just done, that he's just collapsing it. Uh, and there's actually a lot of like drama and controversy and stuff around it. So I want to talk about that and see what's going on. Uh, hey, everybody, it's good to see you. Uh, if you can hear me, let me know. I'm pretty sure my audio is good today, uh, but please do let me know. Keep that in mind as well. Uh, please like the video if you're enjoying what we're talking about today. If you are enjoying hanging out with us on this beautiful Saturday afternoon, it's actually raining here. Uh, please give us a like. Please help shout this stream out because people need to hear about this. We have talked about most recently on the channel ethical micronationalism. And if you are even the slightest bit concerned about ethics and micronationalism or why ethics should be important in micronationalism, what I'm about to show you today is exactly why. Because there are good leaders and there are bad leaders and there are people who want to do the right thing and there are people who want to do the wrong thing. And I'm going to present evidence to you guys. Uh, that in my opinion suggests that Louis Marinelli is doing some some weird stuff and has been doing some weird stuff for a while with Yes California, uh, but we are gonna we're gonna go into that in just a second. It's good to see everybody. Federal Republics of Ohio says sup. Sabatat says sup. It's good to see you. Uh, the Micronation of Gore says sup. Uh, Rocky Mountain uh, Television says what is Cal Exit and then said I'm free. Uh, so I'll, I'll jump into that into a whole th uh, in, in a minute, but basically it's a group of people who believe that California should be able to secede and become its own independent nation uh, in the United States. It has been going on for the past like seven years since before the 2016 election, um, which was the election that Donald Trump uh, won and, and got into office. And so we're, we're going to talk about all this because, oh my goodness, it is it is very, very gross. Uh at everyone let me just shout this out on our discord real quick let everybody know let everybody know that we are here and what we are up to let me go ahead and post that there we go and i'm jumping in okay so uh let me pull up our online screen here see if i can't bring up exactly what i'm talking about um, ooh, Sabatat says, when is the ethical signing going to start? That's a great question. I actually just filmed that video yesterday. So what my hope is, for the longest time, I wanted to film that video and then put it out and let everybody sign it. I have filmed the video. I need to edit it. Then I am going to put out the version, uh, which will be uh, a picture of what I signed and, you know, with my name on it. And then what I'm going to get people to do is actually take a picture of their signing uh, and specifically take a picture of the part that they signed. And then I want to actually like take that, crop it, and put it into the document that we have that we can put on our website so we can update it with more and more nations who have signed. Uh, but I will save that for a different time. Uh, Utrean Empire says hi. Uh, hopefully that will happen in the next week or so. Uh, I, that, that's the plan at least. But let me, let me get to this. So it was on Twitter. You know, I, I followed the Cal Exit movement for a while. We actually had a guy, Marcus Ruiz Evans, who you'll see come up in this quite a bit. Uh, who was the CEO? He he used to be the president for a while of Cal Exit. There again, there's some history there, uh, but he uh, was a part of that. Uh, I talked about at one point uh, on the channel as to why I thought California independence wouldn't work, why it couldn't work, uh, and he asked to be brought on stream to discuss that. So we did. Uh, that ended up leading to another discussion uh, at some point, um, and you know I I didn't mind that. I didn't know a ton about the movement itself or, or that organization specifically, but I thought, uh, you know, the, the guy who I had interacted with, Marcus Ruiz Evans, seemed to be a nice enough guy, so I, I didn't mind that. As it turns out, uh, Louis Marinelli is, uh, is a whole different animal entirely uh, and is 
uh, quite quite strange to me. So anyway, uh, their their leader Louis Marinelli came back from Russia again. Whole whole backstory to that. Uh, he left California at some point, went to Russia, started running their movement from Russia, came back to the United States, uh, and then decided basically he was conservative and that he was like destroying the Cal Exit movement. Uh, it is really interesting because it's led to a lot of like shit post, like internal shit posting. It's led to a lot of like inner fighting that gets to the point of complete childless, uh, child, uh, childishness. If you haven't seen, you know, somebody freak out in this manner, it's it's going to be quite interesting for you. But there are micronationalists. There are people who start micronations who are like 10, 11, 12 years old who have more, you know, dignity and more grace than this guy in certain circumstances. So I really want to talk about that. Uh, but uh, Stefan George says, greeting from Eastern Europe, the Balkans, the mine says, what is Cal Exit? Also, I want to specify all of the stuff that I'm about to tell you guys, again, is my opinion. It's my showing of information. Uh, and please, please take it all with with your own uh, understanding. But uh, I follow them on Twitter because, like I said, we had had pr them on the channel previously. Uh, and sh it, they put out a thing on December 14th that said an important message about Cal Exit from the founder at Louis Marinelli. Uh, and it says Cal Exit. This post marks the end of the California independence movement. Uh, and says I brought Cal Exit into this world, and now I will take it out. Uh, and you can kind of tell by that initial thing already kind of how he feels about himself. But we will we will get into that further as we continue reading his his description of everything. And when we get to certain points, I actually want to slice this up between Louis Marinelli's, uh, you know, final address, whatever this is. And then I want to tie it in as well to Marcus Ruiz Evans uh, YouTube channel, because there is some stuff on there as well. Uh, this has been kind of kind of weird to see uh in just how everything unfolded so that that'll be something that we cover in just a second but let's go ahead and jump into this post by lewis marinelli at marinelli substack.com uh all your place for this guy uh let's let's see let's jump in also seven viewers thank you guys please please like the video if you can manu says hi uh micronation of gore says cal exit is a movement that calls for independence manu says i remember you interviewing them yeah absolutely uh, i kind of regret it now because i like i said i don't really like this guy i kind of don't like what i definitely don't like what he stands for uh i kind of i don't know i feel grifted i feel played uh by the whole thing stephen george says god the u.s state borders are stupid uh, yeah th this is gonna be a whole thing uh mine says cal independence isn't gonna happen yeah it, it certainly looks like it if guys like this are around uh and i agree i i don't think you know it their way about going about it i don't think is the right way but we'll we'll talk about that in a minute uh manuela says yeah uh, cal independence is never never gonna happen agreed and i don't think a lot of people want it uh but we're gonna we're gonna again talk about this okay so lewis says it is vitally important for millions of rational, normal people living in California that the state as we know it never become an independent country. Despite the fact that this guy for the past seven years has been, like, advocating for this. It's weird because he jumps, like, 180 degrees on his position and just shuts down the entire... We're, we're going to get back to it. By rational and normal, I mean just about anyone who is not a left-wing lunatic put pushing a modern-day cultural revolution through cancel culture, critical race theory, and woke politics. This, this man sounds like a Republican puppet head ass. Uh, it just, I don't know. It, I, I don't want to bring politics into it, but this, this man, it's, it's literally going to be an entire political bash one way or the other. I am fine with anybody who's a Democrat. I'm fine with anybody who's a Republican. I'm fine with anybody who's a conservative. I'm fine with anybody who's a liberal. I'm not fine with people who are grifters. I'm not fine with people who are misleading people. I'm not fine with people who create movements and then destroy them for their own personal gain. And that's what I feel like is important to the micronational community. That's what I feel like is important to why I'm talking about this. This is something that was at one point on an international stage. This was a guy who went on like different news channels, you know, Fox News, CNN, uh, ABC, all these different places to talk about how Cal Exit was so important, how independence movements like this were so important, how it was vital uh, for this to happen, how he was doing this for the good of the American people and the Californian people, and then just flips his position and throws it all away, uh, saying, not only do I not believe in everything that I, I believed in originally, 
but also I hate everybody who does believe in it that I brought on the bat bandwagon. But anyway, we're gonna we're gonna get to where he says all that. Um, in most places, this isn't a high bar to pass. California is not most places. As much as I would love to see California no longer a part of the United States, allowing it to secede would only allow left-wing ideology to further metastasize and kill whatever remains about the golden state. So again, this is strange because California is a fairly liberal state, a majority liberal state by their voting record. This is something that is strange because Louis Marinelli, uh, and especially Marcus Ruiz Evans, as we'll go back and see, acknowledges that and describes a lot of their agenda and a lot of their reason for the separation as saying California in general votes a lot more liberally than the rest of the United States. So a lot of conservative politics and policies that come from the rest of the United States still affect Californian policy, and they wanted Californian policy to be able to act independently of the rest of the nation's more right-leaning politics. Or at least that's how it had been pitched uh, and understood when I initially encountered it. So I, I want to continue to to read this, but it, it seems strange, and I think you'll you'll see it as further strange as we continue on uh then again maybe a third world communist state is exactly what they deserve you see he he goes from this thing where he's like he flip-flops because he says anybody who believes in uh californian independence is completely irrational and they're a left-wing lunatic pushing modern day cultural revolution and then he goes on to say i would love californian independence if not for all these left-wing lunatics and then goes, but they deserve a communist state, third world. It's so insane, dude. It's so strange that this guy keeps doing this. Also, 10 viewers. I appreciate you guys jumping in. Um, ooh, Young Sandwich says, howdy. Hey, it's good to see you, David. I appreciate you hanging out. Um, again, this is something that people like David, who's one of our newest citizens, probably hasn't seen any of these videos where I went and like interviewed these people and talked to these people. Uh, so this is some like history about the Empire of Eternia and about kind of who we've dealt with and what's what's happened. Uh, Lazic says hello. Good to see you. Uh, Robert Washington Jr. says hello. Uh, Young Sandwich says bro I'm a grifter. I'm kidding. I get you. Yeah. No but you can tell. You can tell when people are grifters because they won't say it. They'll say everything but to try and get you to to, to buy their grift. That's the whole thing. They'll say, I'm a unicorn if it gets you to believe their grift. Uh, Sabotaz says, I'm more of an independent. Robert says, oh, one more movement killed by the part, uh, sad part, there wasn't even a refi. And 40% of people at one point said, yes, California. That, so that's the other thing. I want to talk about that, Robert, as well, because it's so weird. The, ah, he like ran for governor too in an election that didn't even happen. And it, they they had like a lot of money that was trumped up for that. I okay, I'll I'll bring all that up in a little bit. Um, so he was like, this is an aggressive. Uh, oh, sorry. Then again, maybe a third world state is what they deserve. In fact, all evidence appears to indicate that what was already an uphill battle to save California from itself to an increasing extent is a losing one. That's what I don't understand as well, because he never. Uh, I, I'll, I'll continue. This is an aggressive opinion about California coming from a man who founded the California independence movement and spent the last seven years promoting California exceptionalism and making the case for its independence. So he, he he's even saying himself, I'm a complete hypocrite. I built this movement for the last seven years based on a completely different ideology. And then I just abandoned the ideology, f completely flipped and am now like, uh, you know, advocating against it. And I'm telling you that anybody who's a part of this movie is just bad and wrong. Uh, except for me who started it. I'm great. Everybody else is bad and wrong. It, okay. So before we continue on with this, I do actually want to see if I can go to uh, Marcus's YouTube channel. Uh, because uh, there is some like pettiness that, that I do want to show that kind of encompasses, you know, all of this this feeling. So... I just want to play something real quick. Uh, first, let me go ahead and play. Let me get down to it. Do 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 do. Let me go to his channel. Do 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 do. Uh, 
CEO does not agree with Rittenhouse statement and steps down. So this is a whole thing uh, that is really interesting. Again, regardless of your politics, regardless of how you feel about specific situations, that's not what this is about. That's not what this is covering. It's specifically covering the dichotomy between how two different uh, representatives of the same group are acting with respect to each other. Like, as an organization that's trying to pitch for a political movement and political change, you need to be united on what you're talking about because that's your whole pitch. Your whole pitch is the beliefs that you're dealing with. And this shows a complete proof of decoherence in, in what, they have, uh, what they have created. And, you know, I will, I will pitch that up right now. Give me just one second, everybody. Let me see. Okay, so let's take a look at this. And this shows, again, the pettiness of... Uh, well, it shows the pettiness of Louis Marinelli and the strangeness of the situation. Let me, let me make sure the audio is not going to blast you guys' ears out before we get started. Uh, hello, hello. Thank you. Uh, this is kind of a quick video recently. I, I really didn't want to make this statement, uh, but some things happened and I have to. So let's get right into it. Uh, there was a decision about Kyle Rittenhouse and him being acquitted. Now, whatever you think about that, that's not what this video is about. So I don't care if you were for the decision. I don't care if you were against the decision. So right now that's Lewis and he's saying Kyle Rittenhouse is innocent, which is not something I agree. I started this video, but Lewis is in the same system and that was the point of this video. So here again, I don't agree with that statement, but now as I'm making the speech, Lewis is putting up banners to make it look as, as though I, I said that when I, I don't agree with that. So. so that's something that's interesting. Right off the bat, they start off this stream, Marcus comes up and he's like, yeah, I started this meeting and I don't, you know. I, I just want to say that there is some issues with this particular topic, and Lewis is typing on the on the prompter. Rittenhouse is innocent. Y'all are y'all are all ignorant trolls. This, so what I wanted to say was that yes, California made these statements today. We are pleased that Kyle Rittenhouse was judged by a jury of his peers in a court of law and not by the radical liberal mob. A not guilty verdict is the only appropriate conclusion to the Kyle Rittenhouse trial considering the evidence presented in a court of law. I never agreed to that statement. I was never asked about that statement. And then he puts up the next prompter that he puts up, yes, California will not fall to the liberal mob. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, Lewis, it's straight up, again, politics aside, it kind of did, like, yeah. It did. You quit, man. You you stopped doing the thing. I don't know what you call that. Nor did I ever approve of that statement. And I'm the highest ranking officer in the organization. So I never approved of the statement. I never would have approved of the statement. I was never asked about the statement and it was posted without my notification. Which is a huge problem. And that happens in the micronational community all the time. I want to bring this up as well. You know, it, it just shows that decoherence. It shows that disconnect between what the highest ranking officer, somebody that I imagine Louis Marinelli appointed to the position, like put there and said, you're, you're reasonable, you're coherent, you, you deserve this spot, I trust you with my message, right? Puts him as the CEO, as that, that next top person, and then goes, yeah, but if you, uh, I'm going to do things over you and around you and not consult you with what I do. And then on top of that, I'm going to uh, sp specifically go antithetical to your message. So whatever your message is, I'm going to be the exact opposite of it. And not only does that show, again, a lack of trust in your, your organization, but it also shows an inability to like continue on. It, it shows the, the bubblings of... of um, of a, a potential downfall for any organization and it doesn't necessarily have to be that there are ways to turn things like this around but in particular this does end up leading to the downfall of this organization and when you look at a lot of micronational communities not just micronations in and of themselves but sometimes these are micronational organizations sometimes these are entire like 
again communities of people you know discord uh servers uh you know entire parts of micronational twitter and instagram and stuff that will just all like shut down together because there's one gigantic problem that pisses everyone off so much that they cannot exist anymore and it all just crumbles and gets into bickering and becomes a really really toxic place and that's what i feel like we're able to observe again on a fairly national platform by this political group in the united states uh it's it's quite crazy to see uh again i don't think this is too far-fetched for some politics in the united states but again it's it's just crazy um ooh, uh Ooh, hold up. I'm going to get to more comments in a second. Ryan said the world communist state is a hilarious uh, phrase. Agreed. It's it's a very weird thing. Manu says, well, many people just agreed to have Cal exit at one point as a reaction to Trump having been elected president. Exactly. But then during the Trump presidency, like he switches. And that that's the thing that's crazy. Louis Marinelli like changes his whole thing and then goes like, no, but we really support Trump. You have to support Trump and are like really behind it, which is, I think, a surprise to me, a surprise to a whole bunch of people in Cal Exit who like then posted on their Twitter and stuff afterward, like really negative comments being like, this is I, I didn't join for this reason. I think it was something that surprised guys like Marcus Ruiz Evans as well, who it seems like have a more liberal approach to this. Like this guy, if we're if we're going to say that Louis Marinelli is 100 percent the founder and starter of Cal Exit and that it's all him, like he wants everybody to, to feel that's I, I don't know. I, I wasn't a part of the organization. But if that is the facts and that's what we're going with, then you have to put all the blame on him as well. My man started a movement in California supporting Californian independence, but now saying that his entire point of doing that was to go against the beliefs and opinions of the majority of Californians. Not only the majority, like the vast majority. He's like, I don't like the way that Californian politics is, so I think we should separate and become our own nation because that will change california politics and get rid of the liberals in california what 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 does that even mean why why would you think that that would work it seems like everybody else in your organization believed the opposite of that that you were going to try to actually promote the ideals and beliefs of the majority of californians why would you start an organization that goes antithetical to that i i don't know uh there's also another post by yes california there are some at Yes, California, who would like to spend the Kyle Rittenhouse trial. Can you at least let me present the information, please? <laughs> My man's being like a child. He's straight up like put, turning it on and off, back and forth. Oh my God. This man said, don't read it. Don't read it. Shut up. Don't read it. Oh my God. Morgan's having to beg him. He's having to beg it. Please just give me a platform. Just let me let me say my piece, man. Come on. Oh, God. This is so sad. We'd like to present the... Okay. I'll just read it. So, I'm... Again, I'm on the studio. I'm trying to run a show. I'm CEO, and I'm not even able to... Ah! ah he just keeps memeing on him. He just keeps memeing on him. Why is this guy such an asshole? Like, the thing that's crazy about it, and again, all my opinions... Why be a dick to the people in your own organization? It's your own organization. Like, I, he doesn't step down with grace. He steps down, like, thrashing and, like, hitting people. It's so weird. Put up the banners that I want, so. It's the opposite. I was trying to show you a banner that, yes, California legitimately posted. Lewis is taking that down. And then he's putting up a Kyle Rittenhouse banner so that when this video goes out, it appears as though I'm saying Kyle Rittenhouse is innocent. This is fake news. And this is insulting to me, and it's not fair. And I've never treated Lewis this way, but I guess it's okay to treat me this way, where I'm saying it looks as though I'm saying things I never would have. And that's basically the whole point is, yeah, some people in Yes, California. True, some uh, Yes, California people agree with Rittenhouse, while others don't. We doesn't correctly announce the reality. What? California absolutely agree with the Kyle Rittenhouse decision, while others don't. My point was that the phrase we sounds like everybody does. That is a lie. Got you. That is a straight up lie. Completely incorrect. There is no we. There are many 
yes, California people who like Trump and who like the Kyle Rittenhouse decision. And I love them and I think they're great and they're total members and I love you and you're awesome. But then there are others who do not like the Kyle Rittenhouse decision and would not have said that we all support it. So I, as CEO, never proved that decision. I and that's the thing that's the problem, right? Again, you can, as the leader of an organization, you can have your own politics. Uh, you know, I have my own politics. I've expressed my own politics. I express politics on the Kyle Rittenhouse statement. Um, but at the same time, if you're going to elect other people into positions where they need to be overseeing the media outlets of your nation and your nation's opinion and belief, uh, or even just your organization in general. You know, we're talking about countries. We're talking about micronations. They were talking about wanting to become a nation. They couldn't even do it as a political party within the United States, like a far, far down the list third party in the United States. So, and specifically just in one state, California, large state, still interesting, interesting that this happened just because you have to if you're going to give people autonomy to make executive decisions about what your your stance on things is about how you you identify and about what your politics are as an organization you should be on the same page with what that is and you should be confirming routinely that you know these are the things we're going to be posting about these are the things that are important for us to talk about these are our beliefs in the, and this is why we're doing this and if people don't like it, you know, you can talk to them about it. You can plan beforehand and say, okay, well, this is what we're going to do. This is what I'm going to do, whatever. And you can go above people. But if you do, don't shame them by doing it behind their back when they don't realize that you're going to do it. And then make them look weird because they're still in the position where they have to defend what you're saying. Instead, just give them the explanation of what you're going to do. And then, you know, if it's an executive, if you're calling the shots or whatever give them a chance privately to to know what you're going to do and make the decision themselves as to whether they want to stand for that or not because uh, it's it's important man i don't know it, it and that's the thing it's, it's specifically because he is like the ceo of their organization you know what i mean the ceo and the president aren't talking to each other that's a huge problem and in fact are like infighting to a ridiculous extent it's it's silly at this point uh, also, 11 viewers, I appreciate you guys hanging out. If you would like the video, uh, it does help a lot. Uh, and please share it. Uh, let, let people know. Um, ooh, uh, Young Sandwich says, I sent you uh, a little something on your cash app, BB. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Uh, oh, my goodness. Thank you, David. That means a lot. I will have to check it out. Yeah, I appreciate you. Um, Manu says he wanted a minority dictatorship. It seems like it. Yeah, it's really weird. It's really, really weird. I I would be horrified to see the future of California if Louis Marinelli ever had any power in it. I'm so glad he does not. I was never asked about that, and I was not able to. When I called Louis to ask to get my uh, post, just originally I asked Louis to take it down. He refused. Okay. But then I asked, can you make a post at least clarifying my position? And he hung up on me. So... I'm CEO, statements being made that I never was asked for, never approved of, wouldn't have agreed of, and using my name are being posted. And then when I call him to ask for clarification, I get hung up on. So that's just not workable. As CEO, my name is attached to this. I started this in 2012. I taught Lewis all about Calix. Now, Lewis is a brilliant, brilliant man at marketing, and he's better at me at marketing, and he has given so much to the movement and he oh goodness hold up so who started it that's the th that these are the questions see marcus is saying i started it it was me it was me and then i brought lewis on lewis is saying i started it it was all me and everybody else was really dumb and here's the other thing we're gonna watch a video in a minute whenever we get down to this part of lewis's lewis's goodbye speech or whatever uh he starts trashing different people in the movement by like what they did uh and it's interesting because there's like reactions to this and you can see that it's really like pointed toward people one particularly seems to be marcus which is it's crazy it's crazy how brutal this infighting is he is my brother and i love him and i will always love him and i will always take care of him and i will always acknowledge him as my brother and i will never turn my back on him 
And I'm not worried because I've already proven it. Nobody's gone through the amount of hell that I've gone over for three years to let everybody know that I will never turn my back on a brother who never did anything wrong. And that's still the case and it will always be the case. I love Lewis. I love you. I think you're an awesome person. I'm so blown away by the father and husband you're becoming. And you taught me so much and you're a marketing genius. But I, I didn't approve of this statement and I can't have my name attached. And I can't be seen as an effective leader if statements come out that I never would have approved of. The phrase we is, is just not appropriate. We never said that. Some did. And I absolutely am. What? Now he's posting like YouTube links. I haven't even, mind you, I haven't even seen this far into the video. But this is crazy, man. Because you got to imagine. First off, um, oh my gosh. Lewis won't come on camera which is interesting because it sounds like he is the media guy like i i just bet he has a webcam uh he doesn't want to be on there but he is and he doesn't want to say anything but he is like actively typing you know like stuff in and it's just like spamming these different things on the the prompter one of the people that yes while this man is sell it, saying you're a marketing genius and a wonderful father and he's like mega yang member uh, what see what that agrees that uh, we should spin the Kyle Rittenhouse verdict to form pro Calix and messaging. So, and the reason is, it's just plain basic reality. 80% of California is not going to be happy with the Kyle Rittenhouse decision to take a position of 20% of California when you're supposed to be a movement for all of California is not workable. So I, you just can't do that. You can't go, look, I understand 80% of the population hates the Kyle Rittenhouse decision, but we're going to go with what 20% say, although we're trying to represent all of California. And the whole point of Yes, California was California secession. It was not an individual's opinion about the American justice system. That's not what it's called. It's called CalExit. We're about California seceding. And while many of us are conservative, California is generally liberal. And our movement in the name is baked into California secession and not anything else. Now, we hang out with conservatives, we take conservative points, and that's totally cool. But <clears throat> it's also a campaign that's about staying focused on the issue. Kyle Rittenhouse is not key to California secession at all. It is funny that the Kyle Rittenhouse decision destroyed Cal Exit. Like, I don't know. Oh, God. That just seems so weird. It seems like such a weird off thing to destroy it. But it did. It straight up did. It's just not. So this is a, this has really nothing to do with uh, secession. It has no topics about secession. It had nothing to do with a civil war. This is like a race issue. So we're taking something that's completely antecedent to what we do and then injecting it in here and going. So, and again, that's a phrase below me right now that I didn't say that's Lewis again. Uh, he said, Lewis says, this is not a campaign of following the political winds, but one of principle. So that's the thing that's interesting, right? If Louis Marinelli wanted to start a an independence movement, ba that, that's what I don't understand either. If he wanted to start something based on his own political ideals, why didn't he start something like a micronation? I don't think he should. Uh, this guy is somebody who we don't want in the micronational community. It seems like he's happy to tear down his own people and anybody else that stands in his way, but or who disagrees with him, really. But the other thing is it just... It's getting to me because if he wanted to do that, why did he make it all about California? And I, I kind of get here what Marcus is saying. At the same time, though, I also don't think it's a good idea if you are going to be defining yourself as a political movement to be like playing both sides of the field. I think it's really hard to, like you said, if you're... If you're supporting like 80% of Californians who are liberal and 20% of Californians who are conservative, which I feel like the number isn't even that. I feel like it's more extreme than that. Um, but again, I, I'm not from California. I don't know the statistics. The, the thing that gets me about it, why would you take both sides on the issue? Like I get, I get needing to hear from everybody in California in order to make a legitimate, you know, movement for secession. But 
why not just go with the majority? Why not just stance yourself as a majority, you know, toward the favor of the majority of the politics in California? It just makes your job easier. Like, we, it's the same thing as in Texas. You know what I mean? If you went to Texas and you started, like, a really hardcore liberal or, like, Arizona or whatever and started, like, a really, really hardcore liberal secessionist movement, it would just be surprising because it'd be like that's not what – the majority of people are going to get behind, even if they are behind the idea of secession. It, it's just strange. In injecting statements. So Lewis has control over the Twitter page and Lewis has control over the Facebook page. And I was happy with that because Lewis is brilliant at marketing, way better than me. But the other half of that was that the agreement was that he had to make statements that I approved of. And so today there was a statement I did not approve of that went up and it made it look like I agreed with something that I didn't. And now my only option is to make this live stream video because Lewis hung up the phone on me. I don't have control of Twitter or Facebook, so now I have to go to live stream. And as you can see, as CEO, I can't even have control over my own live stream. So today I was effectively shown neutered as the leader of the Yes California movement. Statements I did not agree with were posted. I tried to get those corrected. I was hung up on. I don't have any direct control over Twitter or Facebook. So people can say things about me that I didn't agree with. Additionally, the only thing I have is this StreamYard thing. And I don't even have control over that to get my own statement out. Oh, It'd be nice as CEO if I could actually say my own words uninterrupted or unfiltered, but I guess not. So again, I didn't agree with this. Don't agree with this. I'm one of those people. Um, <clears throat> and I... I'll never leave the movement, but I, I got to protect my name and leadership ability. So Lewis has control of the Twitter and the Facebook page. I do not. He posted this without my permission. I love him. I think he's awesome, but I didn't approve of that, nor would I. The ability. Real quick before we get into the rest of it, Gorth dipped out. Gorth, it was good to see you. I appreciate you joining in. One thing that Gorth did say it, before they left, uh, they said, you know, we're not really interested in American politics, so I think we're going to dip. It was good to see you. And I do agree. This has a theme of American politics because that's what their movement was about. But I do insist that please, for those of you who stick around and hang out, watch, you know, just kind of what this is as as an interaction between two people, as something that we're able to watch secondhand, as something that, again, will carry over to other statements that these people have made and the way that they've ultimately organized their movement as a whole. There seems to be a lot of different blame on a lot of different sides. It seems like, you know, this guy Lewis is particularly driving a lot of the issues. And I think it's important to point out for micronations, these things which are supposed to be uh, very large complex organizations that are trying to achieve independence not through some secession and political vote like these people are but through just building it by hand is a super difficult thing something that uh, is arguably more difficult than what they were trying to do uh, to get to work practically and these people are, are a great example specifically Louis Marinelli uh, of what not to do in an organization because it it's so much infighting and it's so much difficulty and it you can see that it's really just kind of a strong man attempt uh to to you know wrangle the organization and if you go into something saying you know i'm the leader and i make the decisions and this and this and that then that's fine if everybody knows and everybody is aware that it is about you know your decisions and your whatever then you can make something like that but most of the time you know if you pitch people on something else and then you all of a sudden turn it into all about me, it it becomes a huge problem. Uh, and you can see that happening here. So I think this is a cautionary tale for micronationalists. And it's not just, oh, don't be a jerk to people, which is a huge headline of this, but also shows the intricacies of like interpersonal relationships with uh, within your organization, within your government. It talks about, you know, the importance of, hiring and promoting the right people within your organization to take on leadership roles it, it talks about you know communication and pre-planning of like political ideals and like media statements and things like that it goes toward marketing and advertising for your nation these people actively right now are posting things that are if they ever tried to revive that movement or bring it back are damning statements that show you know that it should not be revived and i think 
potentially the only reason that it ultimately was destroyed and why Lewis stopped it is there's not recovery after this point. There is no saving it after this point. Um, it, there may be, you know what I mean? In some technical way, you could officially save it. You could never destroy it as an organization if you chose not to. But this seems like strong writing on the wall, and it seems like they put it up and blasted it out for the internet. So, again, it. it I think like uh, Marcus here is saying, it, it seems like he was in a situation where he wanted to make a statement uh, and this guy Lewis did not. But um, either way, it, it is something quite controversial that was put out from their organization that uh, specifically is showing uh, the, the lack of discourse that is available within their, their organization. Uh, so it makes people not trust them. It makes it hard for people to want to support that uh, or any similar movement after that because it gives a bad taste in your mouth. It's also a great example of why we need to be careful as micronations on which other micronations we support, on who is a part of our community, on what kind of ethics those people have, which is why we created the rules for ethical micronationalism and why we're going to have nations sign that pretty quickly, is because it's just the concept that like, if there are so many uh, problems and so many bullies that come into any organization that just start, you know, causing chaos and feeding up, uh, stirring up trouble, you eventually get to this point where people say, oh, well, that's just micronations. That's all micronations. Oh, that's all California secession movements. Even though it may not be, it still leaves a bad taste in your mouth when one of the biggest ones is absolute garbage, uh, especially coming from, you know, the, the leadership and this Louis Marinelli guy who's like saying it's garbage and everybody who's a part of it is garbage except for me. Um, it is an absolute cautionary tale, and I advise anybody who, regardless of American politics, you should still watch this. It's like watching the fall of Rome to some extent, you know what I mean? Even if you're like, I don't really care about Roman history, it's like, yeah, but if you're trying to run a country, you might want to pay attention to it as a cautionary tale as to what not to do. Ability as CEO to have statements go out that you never approved of, or never ran by you, you never would agree of, and when you try to correct them, you're hung up on. And then when you try to correct the record on the stream, you're interrupted like this with statements that aren't really what you would say being attributed to you. It's it's really not fair. So absolutely true. Some people agree with the Kyle Rittenhouse decision. I don't. I think I've shown that I'm not really able to be an effective leader. I have no actual control over the organization. Um, again, I'm never going to leave the movement, and I love Lewis, but i got to protect my name and leadership abilities. And my impotence to actually be in control of this organization was writ large today. Yes, California is taking a stance on a social issue that has nothing to do with California being independent. Damn. Now, if there was a way to spin it, it would be that Californians like one particular system of justice, which they do, and Americans like another, which is very true. This is not a campaign policy. Yeah, yep, yeah, that's Lewis jumping back. They're like both, I imagine they both have like a button which like throws up whatever their prompt is. And so they're both just like hitting it back and forth, like changing the, the thing. And so the Kyle Rittenhouse decision, the way that it happened in America, never would have happened that way in California. If California was independent, you wouldn't have to be dealing with these horrible Kyle Rittenhouse decisions that you don't agree with. So, um, The other thing that's interesting, he was like, the Kyle Rittenhouse decision doesn't, you know, it's a social issue or whatever that doesn't affect our movement. It's also just not about California. Like it's, was it Wisconsin? Some sh yeah, like it just wasn't, it, Kenosha, Wisconsin, yeah, it just wasn't. No. That is the place. argument. California is different from America. We are all here to be doing that. And now that that's the case. Um, What's he putting in quotes? Like who? Uh, it says, uh, not guilty verdict is the only co appropriate conclusion to the Kyra and how to convince the evidence of the court of law. Oh, I guess it's, it's either a Twitter post that they put up or it's like Lewis speaking his mind, I guess, but he's, it's, he's going it's hard. It's just very clear. So let's go to a few comments and then I'll make a final statement. Yeah, so this uh, is, I'm just going to post up everything. Here's Mag Mag Maga Yang member, and they're not so great. They would not have to. Oh, th oh, these are straight up comments from a person. Oh. Oh, okay. I thought Lewis was just throwing yeah, shit so, out. I was like, while what? Pittenhouse, people on both sides have to coin openly agree that the trials 
Okay, so now they're Rosenbaum just attempted to blow up the house. But we'll show everything. So here's a MAGA Yang member shot at like a guy to fire right stand anywhere. And I just want okay, that's enough. Yeah. Lewis make... he hung up the phone and he posted this on Twitter and Facebook. So bro, you're going off the deep end. I love you. I always love you, but making statements like this with my name that you know I didn't oh, say yo, hold you, up. I always love you. To this on Twitter, it's not face, uh, uh, and that's not even it has blocked Jason for five minutes from being able to comment. So, that's another high ranking member who. So, Jason is one of our longest members. Lewis has blocked Jason for five minutes from being able to comment. So, that's another high ranking member who was not allowed, uh, and that's not even my statement. So Ooh, this is interesting. So Lewis has control of Marcus's like YouTube, I guess, and is posting on their stream, on his own stream, saying that he's saying stuff. Oh, Lewis wrote that statement and posted my face to it, which is a form of plagiarism and and is not face. Uh, Wait, but it's not plagiarism though, because it'd be plagiarism if you said it and then he repeated it and didn't give you credit. It's straight up just a lie it seems like uh, fair and he blocked uh, uh jason and he hung up the phone and he posted this on twitter and facebook so bro you're going off the deep end i love you i always love you but making statements like this with my name that you know i didn't say really bad blocking jason for five minutes really bad hanging up the phone on me when i'm top dog really bad making statements you knew i wouldn't have disagreed with and posting them up really bad and that's that's part of the problem too. I think is you know the, Mark is saying, I was I was top dog and you shut me out. That's what it kind of feels like here. Is that you know it seems like Marcus was given like a good bit of control. I don't know if he was like always supposed to have that. If he did it himself, whether Lewis gave it to him or what. But it seems like Lewis, you know, Marcus is trying to assert. I'm top dog. Lewis is trying to assert, I've always been top dog. I've always been the best top dog of all the top dogs. And it, it just seems like a weird pissing match. Uh, it, I, I give Marcus credit, though, because at least he's, like, you know, swinging on him with some style, you know, with some, like, etiquette about it. Uh, although this is a, just a really ugly situation in general. It seems like this guy Lewis is just swinging for the fence and he just doing whatever he can this is wild dude uh you should run for governor of california larping i don't know what that means it's like saying you can't go from one city of the bay to another so uh this is out of control i have no effective control of the organization things are being stated that i never would agree with and and let's be honest this isn't like a supreme court decision on um so this is lewis right I'm stupid because I can't pronounce the witness names. Okay. All of that's beside the point. This has nothing to he do with the session. He just keeps it up. This it looks like for the rest issue. of the stream, maybe. We are focused on California politics and trying to get California to see. 80% of the population here views this and showing it. When the Supreme Court shuts down the Red House case, up on because statements oh, were made. Left. Yes, California is supposed to be legal. It's a form of justice that most Californians aren't going to be happy with. And now we're made without consulting me because Jason was banned, because someone put quotes with my name underneath it without my permission, which is the highest form of insult, I'm stepping down. Lewis is now the highest ranking officer in Yes, California. Uh, I will vote for Lewis for governor. Uh, I'm still a member, but I'm not attaching my name to this. I effectively resign as CEO. I'm a member. Um, I'll Dude, it's so gross, though. Why would you be a member? Why? I'll always be part of Yes. I'll always advocate for Yes. I'll always do interviews. But my leadership and ability to be seen as a leader has been effectively neutered today, and I will not tolerate that. I love you, Lewis. I think you're a great person. The two-hour defense closing arm, you have no right to an opinion. Dude, Again, some were for it and some were against it. That'd be f So, um... Stepping down, not going to have my name tarnished with things that I, I wasn't in control of, and and this where I can't even have control over my own yeah, channel. This is brutal. ridiculous. So, um, okay, cool deal. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this real quick, uh, if I can, if it's even possible. 
Okay, yep. So real quick, uh, before we get into other stuff, let me continue reading this, uh, and let's, let's get into some other things to talk about real quick. Ryan said, if you think this is weird, you should look at the histories of such schisms between churches, states, and political parties. Makes sense. Uh, Maximilian says, uh, hello, don't mean to be rude, uh, but who is he? Uh, so these guys are a part of Yes California, which is the California independence movement, uh, and they're literally imploding. Uh, their, their whole stuff is just absolutely falling apart. Uh, the main guy, Louis Marinelli, the guy that you saw uh, not speaking, that was Marcus Rosanna. He is, you know, he was the CEO. He stepped down. We just watched his resignation video. Uh, Louis Marinelli, on the other hand, the president, uh, the main guy who's a part of it. This guy, strange situation. He like went to Russia, came back from Russia. Um, he he like they had an embassy in Russia. It was it was a really sketchy thing. Um, you know, to support the Yes California Cal exit, whatever. He lived in Russia for a long time, then came back to try and run in a recall election against Gov uh, Gavin Newsom, who's the governor of California. Tried to run against him in a recall election. Uh, the recall election didn't happen. Uh, just never even, you know, uh, I. It's, it's so weird. And then now that he came back and he, you know, took this stance of being really hard against uh liberals in california which again majority of his base um he he just destroys his own organization he like comes back and says not only uh am i not uh you know supportive of all the things that i tried to prop up originally but also this is bad and dumb and stupid and i'm canceling it and it you know it's it's always been me but it's also always been terrible but it's terrible because it's everybody else's fault uh let me let me read something that kind of shows that again this is the continuation of his thing the truth is i spent the last seven years promoting california exceptionalism based on data that was often rushed and incomplete or simply inaccurate i worked with the flawed data that was provided to me by my team to build a political movement around california exceptionalism as a foundation for its independence today that movement is known around the world as cal exit and i am proud of how far i was able to take that movement with so free few resources this is the thing that's weird and makes him seem like an asshole to me. He goes, the truth is, you know, I spent the last seven years doing all these things. I did it. That's the truth. Uh, everybody else who fed me data and, like, hit me up about it is wrong and stupid. Uh, and, again, there's another uh, clip from Marcus's channel where he actually shows uh, or actually talks about, uh, you know, being the person who got all the data which is uh which is really weird okay let's let's check this out for a second hello my name is marcus ruiz evans the founder of the cal exit movement in 2012 i published the book california's next century in 2013 the first article ever written about the topic of california being a nation in the news was by tom elias covering my book I traveled to 40 cities throughout the Bay Area and Southern California and the Central Valley, Sacramento and San Diego, talking about the idea of California as possibly a nation in a Scottish style format. Later on, I met other people and we built Yes, California. But at the time, I was the research director. I See, so he calls himself the research director. He's like all this. I was the person who came up with the data. I was the person who came up with the idea for this, which is weird and like. It's not contradictory to what Lewis is saying, but it seems like Lewis is phrasing it in a different light. Like, it, it seems like Marcus is saying, I started this thing and then I, you know, Lewis came along and he helped with the marketing. It seems like Lewis is saying, you know, uh, there, I started it and then I got data from somewhere, which we now know it seems is primarily this guy, Marcus, and is, and all that data was wrong and bad, and that's what caused the movement to fail. Oh, it's so interesting. Such cringe. Wow. I was the person who was the source of information about how to go about selling the idea of California being a independent nation. Now, certainly other people pushed for us to go from what we were exploring at the time, subnational sovereignty or Scottish style devolution into full blown secession. That was not my idea. And other people were pivotal at teaching us everything about marketing. 
but the concepts of California. And it's interesting because neither of them will say each other by name. You notice in that in in that you know stream that they did together, they do say each other by name and they try and call each other out, but. In in these videos, which came out af after, came out after that, uh, and you'll also know, uh, notice that the same thing with this Twitter post, the thing that we've been reading, his resignation or whatever, um, um, Lewis's resignation, the other guy who's not on here right now, um, they also talk again. He he doesn't mention names, but he's like, it was all the data guy's fault. And then, you know, Marcus is like, and there were some people who were pivotal in our marketing, but I'm not going to say who. It, they're, they're directly talking about each other. Like a nation, or that it could it. be thought about like a nation seriously. It was all in, me. In the... I did the book. I did the 40 city tour. I did the article. I was the research director. I built it up with the first secession organization. So I'm taking that knowledge and experience and I'm keeping it with me. I am no longer an officer of Yes, California. Uh, I was blocked from being able to express my opinion on the platform. Uh, and then I've been removed from every access point too. So I have no ability to get any message in through Yes California at all. Uh, if you want any message for Yes California, you have to go to Lewis Marinelli. He is the only person with absolute total dominant control over the whole thing and all messaging capability. Uh, I can't operate in an environment like that. So I love Lewis, but I'm going to go and represent myself. Uh, I will always be dedicated to this topic. Um, I am willing to represent California secession, but I will not do it as a member, as an officer of Yes California. However, I will not be forming my own organization and I will not be trying to rip apart Yes California either. So I'm not making a rival organization. I'm not about tearing about Yes California at all, nor will I be helping anybody do that. I think Yes California is a big hammer and it needs to stay together. See, that's so weird though, right? Because if Louis Marinelli controls the whole thing, but you stay inside it, but you disagree with what's happening, I do agree that you should stay, you know, like most of the time organizations should stay unified, you know, creating rival organizations. We've seen stuff like that in micronationalism where there are all the time these secessions and independence movements and stuff, which is really just people in the higher up, you know, rankings and decision-making capabilities in a micronation will just all of a sudden split apart. And they'll just say, ah, you know, I don't like what you're doing. You don't like what I'm doing. We voted against each other or whatever. I'm taking all of my people and my friends and we're starting a new nation against your nation. Uh, and that happens all the time. Uh, I think Marcus is trying to prevent a similar thing with, of course, their organization. But it's weird because he's saying, I do not stand for any of the things that this stands for anymore. You know, it seems like this is going down a really weird road. But this guy is our leader, and I'm still just going to follow it. I don't know. I, I agree that you shouldn't start a rival thing. I think you should still probably leave, though. Like, it sucks to abandon something that is you consider yours, that you, you know, I don't know whether he named it, I don't know whether he, you know, designed any of the, you know, advertising logos, stuff like that. I don't know. You know, he's talking about that he wrote the book on it and had this idea about, like, independence. I feel like you just probably shouldn't associate with a thing that's, like, really hard tarnishing your name, though. Like, even if you don't start another movement, you could still just, like, not be a part of that one and just still promote the idea of California independence. I don't know. I don't know. Do you, man? But Where it goes, I'm not sure. I'm still dedicated to this. And so, to anyone out there in any other independence movement, if you would like to work with me, you would be working with just myself, Marcus Ruiz Evans, the guy who started the idea of CalExit. I don't speak for an organization. I don't have access to that organization, although everyone in that organization knows me and respects me. But I don't have the ability to get my word out. So if you're willing to work with me simply because of my experience and gravitas, I am willing to work with you as a representative for California independence. But I will not be doing so as a member of Yes California, nor will I be returning to Yes California as an officer. And if you'd like Yes California, you need to see Louis Marinelli, but also nor will I be attacking Yes California. I hope that clears it up. Thank you very much. See, he didn't have to attack US California, and that's fine, or whatever. It feels like a grift to me. Uh, not necessarily what Marcus is saying there, but the Yes California thing, led by Louis Marinelli, feels like a grift. Because we'll, we'll continue to read his like backstory a little bit, uh, but it 
it basically just shows him and identifies him in his own words, you know, flipping the script and just changing his entire narrative and his entire belief structure around that. Um, ooh, uh, Stephen George, it's good to see you. Um, everybody's memeing. Uh, I, I appreciate this. It's good to see everybody. Again, we got five viewers in the comments. Uh, if you guys can go ahead and like the video, share it around. It means a lot. Um, he says, from the beginning, my goal was to demonstrate public support for California independence, and that goal was achieved early on. Several public opinion polls following the 2016 presidential election showed support for California independence in the mid-30s, a great starting point for a brand new political movement which had never taken to the airwaves, never put up a single billboard, and never had an endorsement from a well-known public figure. My hope was that the demonstration of public support would pique the interest of some of California's many political opportunists and that they would take the movement to levels I never could due to the lack of resources at my disposal. After the 2016 presidential election, the polit political opportunists from Silicon Valley did indeed show up. See, it's, it's interesting because it's like getting more and more targeted. Um, at first it was just... You know, I wanted to get some support. And then it's like, I wanted to get some support because I knew the sniveling political opportunists would come about. Those political opportunists from elitist Silicon Valley. Like, it, it just starts to get more and more pointed. Um, Although the media frantically organized to discredit our movement with bad headlines in the face of exploding popularity, these investors predictably tucked tail and ran like the cowards they are. That's what gets to me, right? He's like, not only are the people who I started the organization with bad and dumb and stupid. He's like, it's also that all of our investors, the people who gave us their money, are bad and dumb and stupid because they didn't like what we were doing with it. They didn't like what we became. And that's interesting. They're, they were cowards because of that. And not, you know, financial analysts or political analysts weighing their options. That's the difference between investors and activists like myself. There is no such thing as bad press for activists. You just said there was... Oh, okay, whatever. You just said there was bad press, but okay. Uh, we rocked the boat, and that is why we had to be discredited, and investors didn't want to threaten their investments. What? So, they're say he's saying like, we were so good, which, you know, again, very low third party. Like, there's the Democratic Party normally gets the number one vote in California. Republican Party normally gets second most votes in California. Then you have stuff like the Green Party, the Libertarian Party. Uh, you know, you have other things. You have Native American movements. You have all these different things. And then you have, like, Yes, California. It's not that Yes, California didn't, like, cause some big waves respectively to what it is. But it's interesting that Lewis is like, there's no bad press, but the political elite and organizations were trying to discredit us. The media was trying to frantically discredit us and make our investors leave. I don't think anybody was targeting that movement at all. I think... I think this guy was upset because investors didn't like what he was pitching them and didn't feel it to be appropriate what they were doing. But that's that's my opinion. That's from the outside. That's from somebody who didn't actually go through this and experience this. Uh, but he, he's just hyping himself up. He's like, I'm an activist. Everybody else is a coward. Um our, if our movement did not present a threat to the powers that be, we would have been ignored like every political movement out there you've never heard of. I disagree. There are plenty of important political movements that rock the boat certainly a lot more than yours and yet are not deterred and yet are not falling apart. He's like, you know, the only reason that we were so good is because of how hard we rocked the boat. I disagree. I completely disagree. Undeterred by this, undeterred by this malicious, coordinated media attack, you know, again, they're making it seem like all of these different people were purposely shitting on them. We beat on both, uh, shitting on them for no other reason than to defame them, which, no. Nah. We beat on boats against the current, fueled by the very same negative press establishment, uh, 
same negative press the establishment hoped would silence us. So now it's not only the media, it's the establishment. He's like the entire, I don't know if this is the government, I don't know if this is just other people in society, but he's like the establishment wanted us shut down, the media wanted us shut down. It feels like a conspiracy theory. Although we fought on for years and achieved new milestones and enjoyed success while at it, the struggle that struggle is now over. As the founder and president of the California Independence Movement, I've decided to bring this ship I launched back into the shore and throw away the oars. Okay, California, contrary to what some opposition leaders who are fighting the good fight in that state may say, cannot be saved from itself. Personally, I cannot imagine returning to that state to raise my family. Yeah, so he's he just shits on California as a whole. His whole movement was about California, and it was about supporting Californians and what Californians believe in. And then he's saying, so actually the movement the whole time was to create this situation where we could save California from itself, from the majority of Californians. Now he's saying, but in fact, California is so bad, I wouldn't even live there, dude. I wouldn't even show up to the front door. And that's so weird and offensive to all the people that supported you. You know, this is the exact concept that micronationalists should pay attention to. When you are creating a, a country... You are creating a culture. You are creating an idea that people are surrounding themselves by and are identifying with as a people. So you're now creating this, you know, united sort of combined concept of what a person within that country is. And in the same way for California, California has hundreds of years of history that defines who the people that live there are and why they are the way that they are and if the majority of those people believe one thing because that's their culture that's their mindset and that's their attitude you don't come along and say i'm going to volunteer myself to represent all of these people and then shit on them and say that all their ideas are bad it just it doesn't sound like all their ideas are bad it sounds like you're not the right person to lead them, and more important than that, that you never were, that you never were about trying to lead them, you never were about trying to support them, you were about trying to prop up your own opinion amongst a sea of people who really didn't like it. It That sucks, dude. Don't do that as a micronationalist. Don't create organizations and situations in which people just aren't really happy with what you're doing. That That sucks, and when they are, understand that and recognize that and either change something that you're doing or stop trying to lead people who don't like you man i don't know um aldo says more like the new cal exit emerges okay so aldo hit me with this though does it like marcus said he's not doing a new thing so if he's not doing a new thing who who is y'all starting a whole nother one because my opinion Again, I'm a micronationalist. I'm somebody who believes you don't have to, you know, go out and have a vote to uh, to create something independent and unique. In fact, I think that having a vote on something like that may be meaningless simply because of the way that the United States Constitution works out. The United States doesn't want anybody to leave. The United States isn't going to let anybody leave. That was shown during the Civil War for good reason, and I don't think the United States should be broken up. But, again, that's all my opinion. The, the way that independence movements can be more easily achieved, especially if you believe that California is such a unique and independent place, why not just start living more like a unique, independent place? Of course, you know, you still need to obey the laws of California. You still need to obey the laws of the United States. But that's what micronationalism is. You know, you are creating communities that self-identify as independent. You are able to build, you know, structures of economy and business enterprises that connect uh, local communities and say, we as a whole unit, as a whole organization, as a whole government, identify as separate from the rest and we will still obey the laws that we are forced to we are we will still comply with the things that are necessary in order to keep things productive and maintained but every time we make a little bit of more money we are putting that toward further advancing our own independence and our own movement 
uh, and the support of the people inside of it. It seems like propping up some weird leader to try and get them to be elected as the, the leader of California and then to try and pull the plug on California's connection to the U.S. is not the way to go. It seems really radical, but more than that, it seems like it's a plan that's shaky at best. Like, you could have everything go right with that plan and then the U.S. still go, no, that's not how that works, and then just shut it down. Um, but... You know, building these intentional communities, kind of developing in a smaller scale, but in a more meaningful and effective scale to all of the people that you're trying to help and try and support, I think would make a ton of difference. There are a ton of homeless people in California. There are, you know, lines of homeless people sitting outside of a VA, VA's office uh, in tents, uh, you know, uh, out in Los Angeles. Help those people go go and you know show them what it means to have an independent California. Help them to you know bring them onto the the hundreds of acre farms and stuff that are out there, and you know help them to build a life for themselves and give them shelter and give them uh, health health care and support. That sucks, man. That sucks. Uh, Sabotat says Vernonium uh, then keeps talking. Uh, Aldo says, I feel sorry, uh, the long line of people waiting to kick Marinelli's ass. Damn. Uh, Demoen says, I wonder what will happen to their embassy in Russia. Uh, it'll probably just shut down. You know, again, I don't understand why this guy would make all these weird international connections and then just shut it down. I'm also curious as to where all the money that this organization has supported has, uh, you know, has gathered have gone to. Where, was it all spent? You know, is it done? Or is there something else? You know, does Lewis just have it? Uh, th these are the questions. This is something that's really concerning to me. Uh, Ryan says, it's not radical. It doesn't get to the root of the problem they had with California as it exists. Um, I just, I feel like it's weird, dude. I, I feel like it's not gonna, it's not gonna work in that sense. Um, so yeah, He's like, I just wouldn't even raise my family in California. He says, I understand those families, business owners, and other taxpayers who have left the state to find refuge elsewhere, and, find, and I plan to follow their lead. And he says, I cannot imagine once again subjecting myself to the lunacy of California's leftist government policies and political culture uh, that are the enemy of individual liberty and the source of daily friction in so many lives. I can not allow my wife to form her first impression of America based on what she sees and experiences in California a state uh, which is antithetical to what it means to be American. It's just weird because the Cal the Cal exit pitch the entire time was we don't like America, we don't like what America's doing. California's unique, California's better, California should be its own thing. Then Marinelli says, California sucks. California's garbage. California's terrible. California's everything that's wrong with the U.S. I love the U.S. I love... You know, I want to raise my uh, my wife, uh, my family, have my wife and child come from Russia, where I was living for years, to the United States to support the United States and to promote American ideologies, which is antithetical to what you were saying. It was, it's literally the opposite of what you were saying. You gathered all these people's time and money and support for a movement for seven years that you ultimately decided not only to shut down and turn your back on, but to literally speak out against and criticize in your exiting remarks of stepping down from that same organization. You're basically, <clears throat> you're basically saying everybody who supported me is stupid and I'm glad that I have your money and time. That's garbage, bro. That sucks, you know. I... I don't understand it, especially why not just keep the I don't like America state like you already left. You already went to Russia. Why did you why did you need to come back? You know, if you were like, I don't like the U.S., uh, California is better. And then you go to Russia and then you're like, oh, over time, I've realized I don't like California either. Why didn't you just stay in Russia? I, I really don't understand. I OK. Um. Maybe he couldn't. Maybe they didn't want him. But I promise you, you know. California doesn't want you either. I don't know that most states want you specifically, not because of your politics, but because it seems like you're a grifter a little bit. It's concerning. Um, 
This leaves one final act for Cal exit, my personal exit from California. Upon my return to the United States, which will occur as soon as my wife's immigration papers are processed and she can immigrate to the United States legally, I will not be returning to California, a state that harbors millions who have immigrated to the United States illegally, encourages more to skip the line, skip those families such as my own which are patiently waiting in line. But again, that's weird. It, it, California is in a unique place territorially because there are tons of like tribes of people native americans who didn't have land borders there previously who were just living and existing for hundreds of thousands of years hundreds and then thousands of years to migrate back and forth in, in this large desert area in this large place in southern california that was never defined by you know a boundary until the u.s showed up and just threw one in and said you can't move over this line anymore there were plenty of people who were in mexico who you know were agriculture agriculturalists uh who would move like uh, fly uh you know uh herds of animal and stuff back and uh forth across the rio grande and there was never a problem with that they i i don't understand why he's saying that the culture that built California to a certain extent is like a huge problem, right? Especially if you were supporting California independence the whole time. It's just weird. It's just weird. I, I don't understand it. He literally took the exact opposite opinion as he walks out the door. He just walked out the door flipping everybody off. It's so weird. Instead, I intend to bring my family to a red state where parents' rights will be respected, the political culture is more friendly to American values, and where individual liberties are protected, not infringed by the government. The red state I have chosen to establish my new roots in is the state of Arkansas. Also, stop getting closer to me, Lewis. Stop getting closer to me, man. We don't want y'all here, all right? I'm not in Arkansas, but Arkansas is close enough. Go, go to Alaska, man. Go farther. Go to Hawaii. As such... With the end of my residence in the state of California, so comes the end of the California independence movement, which is hereby ceasing all activity. At some time down the road, the United States may break up into smaller countries. This is uh, a national divorce we don't and shouldn't happen along exist. This national divorce won't and shouldn't happen along existing state lines. Instead, we will need to draw new lines to separate the extent to the extent possible the blue counties from the red ones. He's like. The, the problem was that we were at the state level. We should have been having national secession movements on the county level. Have you ever seen county governments? Have you ever seen, like, local government meetings with, like, seven people show up talking about, like, zoning laws and stuff? Bro, counties aren't going to individually secede. It won't work, first off. But also, why do you want to draw it based on political boundaries? It looks so weird. Like, you ever see the gerrymandering maps? How they look freaking crazy? Like, weird snakes and stuff? That's what it would look like. And also, it wouldn't be effective. It, it wouldn't be based around, you know, natural resources. So you'd have these weird countries that just kind of exist that aren't, you know really the best way for them to be set up and organized probably constantly infighting and infighting with their neighbors because they need those resources that they're kind of weirdly dividing and segmenting up not based on need or population but based solely on and not even you know geographic location but based on county level politics that's the most garbage idea he took the idea. He's like, before I leave, though, it's like he walked out the door, flipping everyone off, closed the door, then opened the door again to say, but what if we made it worse? And then closed the door again. I'm very confused. He says, OK, let me let me jump into some comments before we get too far. Eight viewers. I appreciate you guys jumping in. Um, Stefan said and all Eastern is habitat said the secession is whatever doesn't work. Manu says, I think people been in America for like 40,000 years. Uh, yeah, there, there have been people in the United States. Native Americans have been in the United States for a very, very long time. Um, all artist propaganda, uh, the militarization and closing of borders in recent occurrence in the last few centuries uh, is a recent occurrence in the last few centuries. Agreed. Sabatat says, oh, it's capitalized. Uh, it work. Uh, Demoan says it should. Strange. Aldo says, Marinelli. Uh, never came up with anything for Cal Exit. He stole every single thing 
uh, from the marketing to the talking points from the Scottish independence movement. Oh, got him. Okay, this is interesting. So how did that work out for them? That Well, and you say that he stole everything, but it seems like Marcus was saying in there that, like, Marcus came up with the Scottish style thing. Like, so are you saying that when Lewis was supposed to make the marketing for it, that he just kind of yoinked everything from from Scottish independence, which, like, fair enough. Like, they seem, like, on the surface, similar enough, like, connected enough movements that you could probably do that until he went and weirdly made it not that anymore. Like, I don't think the problem was their marketing at all. I don't think the problem was the way that they pitched themselves. I think the problem was that last second, he literally just threw everything in reverse. Not only stopped it, threw it in reverse. He just backtracked on all of the ideas that y'all had been building and creating for like nearly a decade that people only get 10 decades in their life my man used almost one of a whole bunch of people's decades for bullshit and just flipped them off and walked out the door their time their money god um, Ryan says, remember how, ooh, uh, Aldo said 22 counties in California wanted to start a state called Jefferson. Interesting. Uh, how did that work? Um, ooh, uh, Sabotat says it was capital S it worked. Uh, Damon said that worked. Uh, yeah. Manu says the United Microstates of America, LOL, disunited. Yeah, agreed. Uh, Damon says, uh, I border one of the poorest countries, counties in Wisconsin. Uh, it would be interesting if it seceded, wouldn't it? How would it survive? Uh, Ryan says, some countries tried to secede from seceding states during the American Civil War uh, in the 1860s. That makes sense. Uh, yeah, uh, for survival. Manu says, he wants the Holy Roman Empire, but worse. Agreed, a lot worse. Uh, Demoen says, we would be invaded. Agreed, all of these things are excellent points that Louis Marinelli, if he would have thought for like three seconds about what he was typing probably would have come up with uh thanks internet you guys are really <laughs> really killing it i appreciate it dude we're we're all just i think aghast i i'm you know jaw slacked open trying to figure out what's happening here all those said 22 counties in california want to be called jefferson uh all ryan says remember how the western countries of Vir western counties of Virginia seceded from Virginia? Uh, I don't, but that's interesting. Stefan says, I dislike the government of the USA. Uh, I think a lot of people do. Uh, I weirdly enough think uh, Louis Marinelli does too, but because of the past seven years of his previous, you know, statements on it, it seems like he does too. He's just now on this weird self-righteous isolation train that I think is causing him to say whatever he needs to to, to continue. Um, Sabatat says, I have met with a political opponent inside my nation. I will have to leave. Uh, sounds good. See you, Sabatat. I hope it works better than this uh, complete garbage show. Oh, goodness. Even if you have political, like, look, Sabatat. Sabatat's a small country that you might not have heard of. And yet their leader is saying, hold on, I have to go meet with a political uh, member of political opposition. We're going to, like, talk things out. We're going to, like, figure it out as to how to keep our country united. It's better than yes california did oh man um good to see you sabotat though thank you for hanging out with us uh also guys please make sure to again like the video share it around uh you know let's let's get some support for that aldo says google scottish independence and look at the logo yeah no 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 i've seen it before yep i i understand uh ryan says jefferson independence got interrupted by world war ii rob x says uh cut okay Beliga says, also off topic, but we are holding the vote on whether we are accepting the ethical rules of micronationalism today. Um, so it's not a vote, really. It's, it's everybody's personal like opinion as to whether they want to sign it. Uh, I've already signed it. I am making a video about that. I'm like editing it and putting it out. If you want your nation to sign it and to hold those rules for themselves, uh, again, we're going to have like a final announcement about it that will be coming out when that video comes out. And then I'll have it actually set up on the website. Uh, where you can view that document and if you want to via email or discord message you can send us your signed version of that document and we'll actually take your signature and place it on the large one uh, larger document that's on our website so you can show your nation support for that um, Ryan says you don't uh, have you never heard of West Virginia 
Uh, oh, that's true. That's fair enough. Yeah, I guess I had not heard of West Virginia until that moment. My map of the United States had formed uh, Virginia and West Virginia into one large Virginia. But now, now that you have said that, I, I do recollect, you know, once in the ancient lore of America, hearing of a place called West Virginia, although I'd never been there myself. Uh, Manu says, from some time, I've thought that more power should be given to local government, but he has completely the wrong idea. Agreed. Manu says he wants to isolate himself from all of his progressive neighbors. Agreed. And then move to a state that he's never been to because he feels like that'll be better. But also, I feel like he's going to try and adopt their culture and be like, I'm a real Arkansan. And it's like, no, dude, stop. Stop. You don't represent anybody. You represent yourself. Barely. Damoan says, I don't remember because I'm not 250 years old. Fair enough. Uh, Beliga says, it's a vote for Beligan citizens to accept it as, uh, to whether we are accepting it as a nation. Oh, so you're saying your vote is happening today. Good luck and let me know how it goes. I'm excited for it. Uh, please let me know. Manu says, if a leftist moves next door, he's going to declare a conservative micronation in his property? Probably so. Honestly, this man looks like he would swing on anybody just for looking at him weird. I don't, I don't understand why he's doing this to like his people, why he's doing this to the state of California, why he's doing this again to all the money that people gave their movement. I, you have to actually set this up as not only a political organization, but probably some sort of nonprofit or even as a for-profit business in the state of California. So they have some official like recognition, I'm sure, and they probably have bank accounts associated with that and ways that they have been, you know, raising money for their movement. Who has access to that money is what I'm curious about, Lewis. Who has that money? Is it gone? Was it all spent? Did you run it out on the gov uh, the governor's election and then realize that it wasn't going to work? That you didn't have any more money, so you dropped it? Is it yours? You know, did you like take it? What what happened? Did you give it back? Did you give it to charity? Uh, is it still just in the coffers of Yes, California? Like what happened? Um, he says when that day finally comes, as it will, I will suggest consider. I suggest we consider strategically amputating our left wing first. It may just save America from the cancer that is California. So he's like. All the, all the counties should independently secede and they should all reform based on who their ideological political neighbors are. Not based on any you know natural resources, not based on any population uh, densities, not based on anything of economic or politically strategic importance other than voting ideology weird weird very weird um and then he says then they should all get together and still be america so that they still be the united states so that well he says america okay so we they should all get together then and kick california out as a whole they're like all of california should still just not be there but it shouldn't be that they independently choose to leave it should be that everyone else throws them in the garbage which California makes a lot of money. Like, I don't know that you should do that. My man's an expert economic strategist out here. My man's an expert in uh, learning how to build a proper society, we can tell. California, uh, he says, when we do so, we must not forget the millions of rational, normal Americans who live in California in deep red counties like Modoc and Shasta, the rest of the area known as Jefferson, and those who are scattered across the rest of the state behind enemy lines. Again, it's weird. He's like, these people are my enemies. These people who supported me and gave me money are my enemies. He's like, everybody who's in these small areas that I got support from and who agree with my ideals, they're cool people. Everyone else sucks. All the majority of people who gave me money and time and their effort suck. That, uh, ooh, what a gross statement. What a gross stance. In short, the rest of the country will be more politically homogenous and may actually be able to stay intact if we are willing to amputate, amputate the West Coast. But that also seems just uh, contradictory to what America was like founded on. I'm not saying I love, like, you know, America is, has the best constitution and all that stuff. I'm not saying all that. But 
the United States was kind of founded on this idea of like, you know, having people of different political opinions being able to coexist in the same place and he's like but that's the problem we need to not only remove political part he's like we need to remove anybody who disagrees with the conservative opinion which is weird even i think most conservatives would agree that that's weird most liberals if you said we need to get rid of all the conservatives and throw them in the ocean would you know would say that's weird and you shouldn't do that because despite the fact that there are differences among people, we still all contribute to the same economy. We still all are trying to like have basic functioning society operate above which political candidate we choose for office. And he's like, I would risk everybody's safety and well-being in order to make sure that everybody who agrees with uh, this political ideology is grouped together and that we're all the same. It's really creepy and it's really kind of fascist. I don't like it, man. I don't like it. Um, there are others in California who believe in an independent California. It's up to them now to do what they have thus far not been able to do to form a movement to achieve California independence. But you just said it should. He said it shouldn't be. Then he said it should be. Then he said it's it's bad because of all the people who are doing it now. All of those people suck and probably won't be able to do it. And then he's like, but it it is good and people should do it. But only if they're Republicans and conservatives. Only if they're from three counties in California uh, who are behind enemy lines. Everybody else who is the majority of Californians should not be trying to secede, but instead should wait until they are pushed out by all of the individual counties in the United States. It's such a gross take, dude. Um, okay, so Manu says it's a left mint move next door. Yep. Um, Demoen says, I want to de-establish the government and let the economy rule the world. Uh, interesting, interesting take. Manu says, Demo and isn't something similar happening in Somalia? Damon says, Somalia isn't ANCAP, it's just straight anarchist. Uh, ANCAP stuff also, I feel like, is, is a whole unique take in and of itself. I don't know about that. Baliga says, vote went out about five minutes ago, so there's already a majority in favor of joining it. Yo, awesome. Even if our last citizen votes against it, we still have a majority, so we're joining it. Yay, I'm glad to hear. The rules for ethical micronationalism continue. Uh, Ryan says, amputate sounds like some mass murder. It does. It's sounding hardcore fascist right now. What are you saying? Stefan says, gotta leave now. Bye. Have a good night. It was good to see you, uh, Stefan. Have a good night. Uh, if you can, come back and watch the rest of the stream when you get a chance. Let us know what you think. Uh, Manu says, ooh, uh, Ryan says, Somalia is an, an uh, anarchist. Their rulers, uh, there are rulers and warlords. Uh, Manu says, but if it's a lawless world, but if a lawless world is dysfunctional, power hungry people will try to rule it using uh, the economy and also just like political force, military force. Yeah, I don't know about all that. Uh, Demoen says, I have a Minecraft server that I'm on with my friend group. We have different political parties and if those were abolished, the country would probably collapse because the states have a lot more power. Interesting. Uh, Baliga says it sounds a bit dumb to kick people out of America based on opinions. Even a three citizen state like Baliga has disagreements. So why would America agree with each other? Agreed. You know, it, it, sociologists, uh, and, and uh, other people who have studied political science, uh, have agreed that like, once you get, uh, to a certain group size, you can't get people to agree on anything. Like once, I think it's like five or six people or something. Like once you start to get above like a handful of people, uh, you can't get anybody to agree on like one thing. It, you can't get every single person to agree 100% on the same thing. Everybody has their own differences, their own slight opinions. That's not what should run a country, is one person's 100 complete opinion. And if everybody doesn't agree with it exactly like it is, then it's a problem. There are some compromises that need to be made. There is a general ideological tone that needs to be followed, but there should be wiggle room to allow people to exist if they don't 100% blindly follow your ideology. And that's silly. That's so silly. Okay. There are other ca in, in California who believe in an independent California. It's up to them now to do that. 
Uh, I do not have much faith in their ability to achieve this goal because I know these groups. After all, I founded Yes California and every pro-independence group that exists today can trace its roots back to Yes California. That's so weird. Again, why say I did everything, everything is me, but also you, it's not going to work without me. And I really want it to work, but also y'all are bad and dumb and stupid. It's so weird. Um, it was a... It was I who established the California National Party, designed its logo, wrote its original platform, and served as its first chairman. Other groups are merely spin-offs of Yes California and were founded with resources and funding from Yes California. But where's that funding, Lewis? Hashtag, where's that funding, Lewis? I hope they will prove me wrong because I will always be an advocate of California's independence, not for their sake, but for ours. Weird. Let's see what these comments are. David Lesquire, December 16th. Quit your tantrum. You are not the movement. It has existed before a colloquial hashtag, and it will exist after you leave. As a born Californian and lifetime secessionist, I despise you and your attempt a uh, manipulation of my homeland. You were never going to succeed because you were only in it for yourself. It isn't just liberals wanting secession. It's those on the center and right who are fed up with D.C. as well. Interesting. Yeah, it seems like people are just like, you made this about like party politics? And it was never about party politics. It was about you being an asshole, is what it sounds like. Claire said, hi, mind puppet. <laughs> Interesting take. What a total wanker you've become, Lewis. Oh, no. Although you may say that that's not new. You never did anything alone. California's a beautiful state. You miss the beauty in everything because you can't find it in yourself. Got him. Hashtag self burn. Internal beauty uh, destroyed. Got him. You missed all California's main points of celebration in this pseudo-statement. Too busy staring in the mirror. Utter narcissist. I didn't even realize to what extent. Delusional and trustworthy. Untrustworthy. I wonder who's paying uh, you to speak now. You are a poor apology of, uh, for a human being that has had the privilege of working with passionate, heartfelt, vulnerable people. And with your kind... And with your kind of willi willful ignorance, you probably have found a good match for yourself in your chosen state. Uh... None will challenge you there, so you can carry on pretending you are superior to everyone. However, your spitefulness may not be so welcome. Don't shit on Arkansas. I, I don't know Arkansas. I'm not saying Arkansas is the greatest place in the world or whatever. But don't shit on the people of Arkansas because this dude's moving there. It, they don't want him either. I'm certain. I am almost certain they don't want a dude who's so self-righteous that he, he will shit on anybody who is left in his wake of destruction. Ah, this is so gross. Um, let me see. Uh, Baliga says, it does side bad. I do not know why someone would want to amputate a state. They shouldn't. And especially because California is, again, one of the, like, wealthiest. Like, California and New York, one like, the, some of the wealthiest states in the country you don't want to get rid of either though everybody knows new york city everybody knows los angeles uh, san francisco you know you would be losing those entire cities like millions of people a large swaths of the united states population would just be gone that that's horrible manu says every person has their own mind uh people don't always agree democracy is not about the democracy uh, is not about that. Democracy is about compromise. I agree with that uh, to some extent. Agree. Like I, I feel like there should still be some main, you know, base ideology for a country when that thing is established and you know when it's moving forward. And that may change and adapt over time. I agree there should be liberal wiggle room. I agree there should be uh, liberties that people have that allow them to be of a different opinion than their leaders, and that should be fine, even if you're not in a democracy. It's gross to think you can run a civilization with only your opinion that changes with the wind and as you feel like it and may go 180 degrees against what you built for seven years. I think that's the thing that's weird. Even if he's 100% a narcissist, even if he's 100% uh, this like fascist dude, even if he's 100% this like extremist, I hate everybody sort of guy, he didn't even stick to his own politics. He flipped the script on his own politics, and I feel like that's what makes everybody hate him. Like, there are really intense, like, Republicans who 
may be dicks personally, you know, and the people who work with them in person and, and know them privately uh, may not like them as people, but will still back them because they know this guy is not going to abandon the party. This guy is not going to abandon the ideology he's been working for for so long. Uh, same thing with liberals, you know. Uh, there are plenty of liberals who are assholes uh, in person, I'm certain. And, you know, it doesn't mean that they're, they're the people who don't like them aren't still going to support them, you know, because they won't abandon the politics that all that group has been building all together because they realize it's about more than just them. They're at least that self-aware. This is crazy. And I know this is a long shit on Louis Mar Marinelli uh, video, but... This is just one of the most bizarre leadership circumstances I've ever seen in my life, especially in a political movement, especially in something dealing with secession, independence, micronationalism, all these similar topics, which I feel go hand in hand. And I feel it is very, very important to discuss because as we as a micronational community keep pushing forward, we have to contend with stuff like this. There are going to be people who bring this up as a reference to why micronations can't work and as to why secession movements can't work and as to why the united states will always be a flawed place and why there will always be you know this chaos and, and ensuing issues uh and why you know they will say that uh, people can't ever get along and so we should never trust anybody to try to do anything new because new things never work and new things will always fail and it's like well if you have guys like that leading it who aren't giving a continual forethought, but when you have people who sincerely care about what they're doing, when you have people who have grown up in a society who they legitimately want to better, give them a chance to do something better. Don't take the opinions of guys like this who legitimately never cared about it in the first place as the answer uh, and as justification for why you don't believe that something will work, something new will work. Um, that's why I wanted to point this out to the micronational community. This is a gross example of what you should not be and what you should be trying to speak out against openly and actively. People have asked me on this channel for a long time, why do you, why do you talk so much about politics? Why are you so interested in American politics and stuff when you're a micronation? You're trying to do something different. You're talking to the world. Why are you focusing so much in on the United States? One, because I'm within the United States, the entire of attorney I, is internal to the United States territory. But in addition to that, these are important strides that need to be understood for the micronational community. These are important moments that are changing the world, which need to be understood as cautionary tales and as ways for us to learn about our own advancement as a movement. You can't do these same things and not expect the same results. This is an example of how micronationalism could fail. This is an example of how individual micronations do fail all the time. Uh, and this is something that needs to be stated clearly and truly. Micronationalism is better than this. That's why we need ethics. That's why we need a base code of standards. That's why there is so much emphasis put on the, you know, political ideology and micronationalism because it goes hand in hand and because your leadership style, who you are, what you believe all ties into the success of your nation and how you go about operating that nation. Um, ooh, uh, Manu says, people don't always agree. Yep, democracy is about compromise. Baliga says, uh, yeah, and we should not get everyone to be assimilated into the majority. Agreed. Uh, Damon says, democracy is a flawed system. People vote based on if they gain something, not if someone is actually a good leader, and that will lead the country uh, in the that will lead the country in the best way possible. Agreed. Manu says, not necessarily. Also, democracy and presidentialism are not the same. Agreed. Pro uh, Ryan says, there are different systems lumped together in a group labeled democracy. Agreed. Uh, Baliga says, I do not live in America, but Texas and California are the states I know most non-Americans think uh, or know about. Agreed. Agreed. Texas is a really big state with a lot of money in it. California is a really big state with a lot of money in it. New York is a really big state with a lot of money in it. Uh, and you don't want any of those states to leave, you know, whether you, whether you agree with their majority politics or not, you don't want them to leave because they're important. Uh, they subsidize a lot of different other nation, uh, a lot of different other states. And helped pay for a lot of federal programs. A lot of our like natural parks and stuff are out in California. 
uh, a lot of like Native American reservations and stuff are out in California. I, I don't know why you would just throw that to the wind. Um, Ryan says, uh, a lot of systems are labeled democracy uh, when they shouldn't be, given how not democratic they are. Agreed. Believe us, democracy is the best system we have, uh, so we need to follow it. Eh, I don't know about that all the time. Demoen says, go read some Aristotle. Manu says, one guy didn't uh, feel like people listened to him, so he stepped down. And then some dumbass changed his personal politics, so he destroyed the entire organization. Exactly, Manu. And that's what we want to talk about. If you are going to step down from micronationalism, if you're going to step down from a political office or something like that, do so with grace. Do so with dignity. You know, say, hey, I'm leaving and I'm following a new chapter in my life and I'm moving and I'm changing, whatever, you know, but I still love this movement. I still love the people in it, whatever. Whatever you want to say, go ahead and make your heartfelt goodbye speech. Don't shit on everyone walking out the door. Don't destroy the entire organization. It's shameful, dude. It's so sad. Beliga says, I've, and it makes everybody else who like stood with you look sad as well. It was, you know, weird to watch uh, Marcus have to be like, I these aren't my words, you know. I'm just getting stuff thrown at me. It, uh, it makes the whole organization look really, really bad. Um, Baliga says, I have heard of his beliefs and about how philosophers should rule and people are uneducated and do not know what is best for them, but I will still read up about him. Uh, agreed, Aristotle has some some interesting opinions, I guess. Manu says, you could have just left, Lewis. Agreed, you could have just left. You could have just left and just given the thing to other people who cared more about it. Uh, but I think there was a money aspect involved. Also, we got five viewers. Thank you guys for hanging out. If you could like the stream, it means a lot. It helps out. It helps us to bring the light of the micronational community to the world and to explain to micronationalists how to better live, how to better operate their societies, and how to come together as uh, a a larger political entity, as a larger political movement. Um, Ryan says, LOL, appeal to Aristotle. If you tell someone to read such a thing, you better drop a title to one of their writings to actually read. Agreed, agreed. Very many writings. Uh, very different writings. Joseph Pina says, AP, uh, choose the third way, a centrist and neutral ideology. Um, I don't know that I support centrism either. Centrism's weird too because, oh goodness. I don't know, man. I feel like centrism just kind of helps whichever side you're you're against, right? Like if you really believe that, you know, conservatism is the right way to go or liberalism is the right way to go, you know, as, as ideologies, as the American versions of those ideologies, then it's weird to say let's compromise with the other side because on a lot of the issues that they're like very hot button about that are that are big topics it's not like a compromise thing it's a you know it's like civil rights issues that they're that they're talking about and you know what's wh how these civil rights are defined and stuff i don't think you should really compromise or be centrist on civil rights uh so i think that's a huge difficulty uh in trying to you know create compromise with people who are either for or against civil rights depending on what side they're on and against what they're doing um Again, you know, all of this can be looked at from either perspective, uh, you know, a, a liberal perspective or a conservative con perspective. And you would say, well, yeah, the other side is like the one that's causing the problem. So being centrist doesn't necessarily solve anything because then both sides are just equally unhappy uh, or maybe not even equally unhappy, just both unhappy. Um, Josephina says, and also a lot of times centrism doesn't achieve the goals of either so both will say like yeah but this is still wrong and it's still not what i wanted and the other side is still causing me all these problems um ooh, demoen says gotta go by good to see you demoen have a good day uh beliga says i used to get new york and la mixed up but both of them uh as they are big cities so do not kick them out as they would get the most most of the publicity agreed if you ever kicked out new york and california from the united states Immediately, other countries would just be trying to get those those nation uh, those people uh, to come into their nation. You know what I mean? It'd be amazing if the U.S. you know had California or New York secede, or they like kicked them out or whatever, and then 
just they became a part of Mexico or a part of Canada or, you know, something like that where they just go, oh, so now these other countries just have a lot more money and power than they did previously. That's interesting. It seems like that would almost change the dynamic of the U.S. being this large political and militaristic entity that controls a lot of the world economy and stuff. Wow, it it seems like that would almost change the game. It's as if these large metropolitan areas uh, and industrial centers uh, were a big driving part of making that happen in the first place. That's crazy. Um, okay. Let me... Let me continue to, to read what everybody's saying. Uh, Ryan says, what does a neutral ideology mean? Agreed. Uh, Pina says, uh, Ryan, it attempts to reconcile right-wing and left-wing politics. I don't know about that. Uh, Ryan says, centrism is usually a lie. Agreed. Uh, jo Joseph Pina says, not all the time. It's just that it's hard to pick a centrist position on things that, again, people consider like human rights. Uh, is, is, is interesting. Uh, a lot of time people's politics are on very, very one side or the other side thing. It's hard to be centr centrist on something that is a very passionate point. Um, and, and about like the main functioning of how someone exists in society. Um, Baliga says supporting centrism is supporting the status quo or neoliberalism in a communist society. Uh, commies are centrist interesting uh, and so on and so forth agreed and then manu says uh gonna go see my cousin see you later hey it was good to see you manu thank you for hanging out uh ryan says historically the group uh positioning themselves as third positivists and left-wing syncretic have all been white right-wing ideologies uh i i get that i get that ryan uh yeah so this is is really weird it's weird to see marcus Ruiz evans uh, you know, just kind of having, it, it's weird because it feels like this, Marcus Reeves Evans, like, it seems like ran the movement for a while when Louis Marinelli was in Russia, and then all of a sudden Louis Marinelli comes back to try and do this gubernatorial election, gubernatorial election, uh, and then Marcus has to, like, kind of kowtow to him and just, like, give, you know, give in to whatever he wants. And then he just becomes increasingly, increasingly power hungry and just takes all this stuff. And at the end of the day, just kind of, kind of messes it up, kind of, kind of destroys the whole thing. Um, I still don't know where everybody sits in all this. I don't know who's making money out of this. I don't know, you know, what is actually happening with this whole situation, but it seems so sad. And I'm so sorry that anybody is is you know feeling backstabbed by these people who they supported for such a long time again like they're talking seven eight years nearly a decade of people's life that they like gave to them that you know a lot of people may live to just be like 40 or 50 or 60 you gave like a good percentage of your life potentially a quarter of your life potentially you know a fifth or a sixth of your life to a movement that you then find out the guy leading it goes and you're dumb and stupid for believing that and i hate you thanks for your money and time bye uh so bad um okay so uh ryan says lots of right-wing nationalists and fascists in the 30s spread syncretic myths and propaganda about themselves interesting uh, Baliga says centrism in the UK, uh, US, Canada, Australia, Germany, and most countries is neoliberalism. Uh, Ryan says positionist. Um, it's that's such a that's such an interesting take. Uh, Cause yeah, I agree. Centrism is like a whole can of worms in and of itself. Uh, again, it's a similar thing with like voting for third parties in the sense that if you vote for a third party. Uh, you're probably helping just the side that you disagree with because you're taking votes away from the side that you more agree with. But it, again, it, it sucks. It really, really sucks. Uh, and yeah, a lot of the time there are groups that are created specifically to try and pull those votes away and specifically to try and weaken the opposition. So it, it's hard to pick centrist positions. One, because there are very few centrist positions that are actually, you know, even workable or reasonable as you know policy 
but in addition it's also very very difficult because there are plenty of centrist groups that are not really advocating for anything sincerely sincerely but are just trying to be tools for one of the two larger uh, political ideologies to help rain away support from their opposition um, okay from the beginning my goal was to demonstrate public support for California independence and that goal was achieved early on so from, uh, yeah we, we read all that um, yep oh yeah he's leaving yeah that was the end of it okay cool yeah so he is he was shitting on it uh, continued shitting on it I want to see if there's anything else on Marcus's YouTube channel that uh, isn't just lit literally like this whole thing falling apart. Uh, goodness. What? Fun with. I'm very confused. I'm very confused about some of the channel. Um, okay, so now it just seems like it is his, his like personal, his personal channel. Um, check out some videos. Let's see. Yeah, but they are like hanging out with Republicans really hard. Again, I just don't understand why it is this way. Um, why they decided to design a political movement around California secession that is against what the majority of Californians believe. Uh, it feels weird. Uh, it seems like this was kind of months in the process of falling apart and collapsing. It seems like a lot of people inside are really, really unhappy with the way that things worked out, and it seems sad for everybody who gave them time and money. Baliga says, centrism is, in my opinion, uh, just support for the current system. But yeah, in the UK, it is not uh, as true. For example, Brexit happened from people voting for uh, U UKIP, a third party. Uh, also, Ryan pointed out Sweaty Chronicles. Yeah, agreed. He keeps... Uh, there are a number of uh, videos on Marcus's channel where he, he says, Sweaty Chronicles, Sweaty... Man, sweating, sweat, sweaty, sweat, sweat, sweat. Respect it. Don't don't sweat them, Marcus. Do do you? I guess. Uh, this is is so interesting. I'm this movement falling apart is is just unique to me because again, I had these people on the channel. We like talked about this issue a number of times on the channel, and. Even though, again, I, I had started out with the opinion that I didn't think California ind independence would work. I wanted to hear the talking points from these people. And I legitimately hoped that what this movement was and what they were doing was at least genuine to what they were pitching. Uh, and it seems like, at least from Louis Marinelli's standpoint, who again is claiming to be 100% the leader, founder, organizer, creator of all of this. Uh, which, take that as true if you want or not. But he's saying that it was not that at all and that it was just this big lie and that, you know, he never really actually cared about that to begin with. So it, it was really just about his own political ideology and discourse and taking people's money, it seems like. So it's the concerning. Baliga says, sorry, switch topics halfway through. Uh, you're good. I, I respect it. And I'm curious to... Death, learn more about it. But I am just so disappointed in what that has turned out to be uh, as, a, as a group for, for Yes California, as a cautionary tale for micronationalists. It's just shameful. It's just straight up shameful. And I'm so sorry that people are doing this. Uh, at the end of the day, what, you know, it, and they titled it Cal Exited. Or is that just the name of the group? Yeah, hold up. Now he's... He, so, Cal exited. An expat 
expatriate returns to America to save it from California. That's such a weird take. I hate that. That's such a weird, gross take. Um, he's like, I left the U.S. and I didn't like the U.S. and that's why I left it. And now I came back to the U.S. because I love the U.S. and I hate California. 180 degree flip. My man, you are the worst kind of politician. Um, Beliga said, that is not as true. Yep, the UKIP party. Uh, and then said, it's sad another movement was a fraud. Why can people not be honest? Agreed. Uh, it seems like a situation where if you knew ahead of time, like you're coming back from Russia and you don't like California and you're trying to shut this whole thing down and clear up all of this mess. Well, say that. Say that from the beginning. Just be like, I don't want to be a part of it anymore. Just say you don't want to be a part of it. Give up all the bank account control. Give up all the social media control. Take your name off it. Just say, this is not Louis Marinelli's Yes, California anymore. It's just Yes, California. It's just this other thing. Because there are people who gave their time and money who still want to do it and who still want it to be a thing. Or if you don't want that, at least give people their money back. You know what I mean? As much as you can. Maybe they did. I, I don't know. But it... It doesn't seem like there's really any media effort to show that they've been taking steps or doing things to right all of those people that I'm sure feel very, very wronged by this situation. It seems like they're more so just saying, yeah, this guy up and dipped and yeah, that sucks. I guess the movement's over, uh, which is, is really sad. Uh, Beliga says there needs to be laws to make politicians honest and not uh, corrupt as it is commonplace. Most are like that. Sorry for not clarifying. Uh, you're all good. No, I agree with that. A lot of politicians are corrupt. I think the primary issue is that politicians by nature are the people who are voting on law and, and determining that policy and in, in a democratic system. And so the people who are politicians are, you know, because honesty, in a lot of cases, specifically politically, can be kind of a vague thing. You know, if I say I am going to try my hardest to make sure that every person in America gets fed, you know what I mean? As a politician, if that's my political goal, right? And that's what I pitch to people and I get overwhelming support and I win a presidential election and all that. Because I said I'll try my hardest, you know what I mean, doesn't necessarily mean I even have to do it. It doesn't mean that I have to get close to doing it. It doesn't mean that I have to show any evidence of trying to do it. All it means is that I said I would try to. So there's plenty of rhetoric that can be used. There's plenty of spin that you can try and give to something that will allow somebody to make almost any claim they want and also have no consequences as a politician. And that happens all the time. That's kind of just what our political discourse is at this point, uh, is essentially people trying to get support by using specific talking points and then in private in the actual votes and in the actual uh, determinations of what they're going to do in their own political candidacy to then determine uh, how their actual moves are going to be made, you know, what things they're going to be voting on specifically, what, you know, things they're going to be trying to uh, partner with other politicians on, what, you know, lobbyists they're going to be accepting money from. All of those things create kind of the politics that they're actually going to be going into, aside from what they may say on the campaign trail. Uh, and the other issue that, again, gets into American politics, which is a whole other thing, is the fact that uh, politicians write bills that can be on anything. You know what I mean? You can have a bill that's, you, for example, the House Infrastructure Bill uh, that was created that also talks about a whole bunch of other different things that can just be lumped into there, you know, like releasing classified uh, documents about uh, UFO footage and stuff like that that happened. Uh, there are plenty of bills that go up for um, that go up for votes in Congress that are designed to be one thing, but because they are needing so many different politicians' support, they have so many different subsections and amendments to them that allow them to have almost anything else put inside of them and then voted on and, and passed that the American public may not realize because they didn't read the full thing because there are lots of bills that are passed all the time that may be hundreds of pages long, um, but also because it 
is something that is designed into the system. It's something that people have found as a loophole to get things under the rug past that otherwise may not be if their true intentions were brought to the public eye. And that's something that happens all the time in the United States. It's not a new thing. It's not something that I think is shocking to anybody who knows about it. Um, it, it happens constantly, and it, it's a part of the process. It's fundamentally baked into how every politician organizes and creates uh, whatever their campaigns are. And it happens year after year after year after year. Um, and it, it's really interesting because people then try and argue, well, you know, you should know the law then, and you should be well versed in uh, why things should be happening to you, and you know, you should be politically educated. But there are so many laws on the books in the United States that the United States itself doesn't keep track of all of the laws. You know what I mean? There are more laws than I think are like in all federal law, like all of the federal law, every single code, every single statute, every single amendment, uh, then the U.S. government like actively keeps track of. There's nobody who knows all of that law. There's nobody who has, you know, any high percentage of that memorized at all because it's stuff thrown inside bills that have different names for different things that don't have anything to do with some of the amendments that are inside of them. And so when you see a flashy bill name that is passed, that may have some percentage of that bill that's dedicated to whatever that topic is, whatever the headline nature of the bill is. But there may be, you know, another 20, 30, 40 percent of that that is just on any other thing that could have been needing to be passed that politicians said, well, if you're going to get me to sign this bill, uh, you're also going to add this thing to it. And then once everybody's little thing gets added to it, then we'll sign it, uh, which is, is silly. Um, ooh, Ambrosia jumped in and said, hi, Ambrosia here. Good to see you. 27 Kyle jumped in. It's good to see you, Kyle. Um, Baliga said, uh, it's corrupt. Agreed. Uh, and that's what we're talking about. Today we are talking about the cautionary tale of the collapse and destruction of the Yes California movement, the Cal Exit movement, uh, specifically by its great leader, Louis Marinelli. Uh, this guy is a complete jerk. We just read his entire, uh, you know, leaving statement, his closing address, in which he basically says that everybody who uh, started that movement, everybody who supported that movement, everybody who believed in that movement uh, was bad and dumb and shouldn't have done it. Uh, he's like, all the liberals in California are a problem. He's like, I don't even like California, which is weird. Uh, he's like, I spent seven years on this movement, uh, and now I'm going to just throw it away and shut it down. Uh, this has been a really, really gross thing. We just watched him, uh, again, very much like a child, uh, start spamming uh, – Things in a in a video conference with Marcus Ruiz Evans, who is supposed to be the the CEO of it, you know, the second in charge guy, uh, and and effectively just not only silencing him but putting words in his mouth quite literally. You know, he, there were parts where he was uh, he was taking uh, you know YouTube comments that were supposedly written by uh, by Marcus that actually weren't. It seemed and throughout the video. Uh, that Lewis was typing and then posting under Marcus's name. Uh, all very funny stuff in the video, all very sad stuff when you realize it's the actual nature of how their political organization was being run and the ultimate downfall that that led to. Uh, it makes Lewis seem like a huge child. Uh, it's garbage. It's really sad. And again, there are micronationalists who are micronational leaders who are 10, 11, 12 years old who know how to operate and function a government and a political organization better than these guys. So it it sucks and it, it's hard to watch that struggle and that fight happen um but yeah it, it ultimately killed them and i really hope that it is a cautionary tale for the rest of the micronational community uh, but it's good to see you guys uh, glad to have you here uh beliga says how much food will they have even um i'm trying to figure out what you're describing uh 27 says i have a headache i'm sorry to hear about that kyle uh beliga says it's corrupt beliga said uh ambrosia said beliga same um Beliga says, hope it gets better. Uh, agreed. I hope you uh, feel better, Kyle. Um, Ambrosia said, true. Uh, Beliga said, R. Uh, Ambrosia said, get well. Ambrosia said, all right, so this uh, man has over 1K subs and five people watching. Uh, agreed. It's a, it's a whole thing. Uh, let's, let's jump people in. I appreciate it. Uh, also, you never know. Uh, uh, 
there are some channels who have a lot more subs than me with a lot less people who actively watch. Uh, the UN, for example, the UN has, you know, millions of subs, and yet their active stream count is like two or three people uh, most of the time. Belika says, I have noticed 200 people is equal to one view. Uh, that, that makes sense. Uh, as in one live stream, uh, as in on live streams, that that makes sense. Uh, Twenty seven Kyle says, if you guys are talking about corruption, you should see Europe. Yep. Uh, Ryan says, everyone in the USA has broken at least one federal law. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah. Beliga says about two hundred is equal to ten views overall. Uh, depend like really depending on what you're talking about, guys. Twenty seven Kyle says, did anyone hear Russia is uh, missing troops? Is massing troops near Ukraine? They might invade. It's because if they leave Ukraine, they might join the EU. Yeah, it's a whole thing, a whole other, you know, international political situation that has been brewing uh, and that I would love to talk about. However, my camera did just shut down, uh, so I might be calling the stream at this point. I definitely appreciate everybody hanging out. Uh, again, I am going to be actually finishing up this topic. Uh, not really this topic. I'm going to be finishing up uh, the rules for ethical micronationalism, a continuation of all of this, uh, very, very soon, uh, to show that as a community, we can be ethical, we can follow better ways than some of the people that we see here in, you know, U.S. politics and in world politics. We can be better than this. We can come up with, you know, a basic solution for the general ethics for micronationalism. So we can at least point out when people are doing something wrong, um, and we can, you know, have a group of people, a group of nations who support a better way of doing things. So, uh, again, if you guys uh, support it, definitely go and sign that. Uh, again, I'm going to be dropping the video of myself signing that and showing that support hopefully today or tomorrow. So check out for that. Francisco says, Rhodesia here. Greetings, AP. Uh, greetings, Rhodesia. It's good to see you. Um, and yeah, I, I hope everything is going well for everybody. Francisco says, Rhodesia is starting to industrialize. We are making a uh, first factory that is going to produce bricks. Congratulations, Rhodesia. I am glad to hear that. And I will see everybody next time. Peace, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. I uh, hope you guys are doing well tonight. Uh, again, I hope you guys are enjoying your time. Um, I may do another live stream here in a little bit, uh, so if you do want another live stream, definitely hit me up. Uh, if you guys are just hanging out, throw it in, throw it in the the Discord. Let me know when you guys uh, want to uh, want to do that, because I'm here. I have something to do in a few hours, but I'll still be good until then.